So guys, welcome to the National Museum of National History. Among all the museums you have in DC, one of the most popular ones is right here, the National Museum of Natural History. And as soon as you walk in through that door, you are welcome to a gift shop. And it has all kinds of souvenirs that you can get for your family members here. This is a museum that I strongly recommend if you come to the nation's capital. As I've been saying on previous segments, DC has a lot of museums and they are completely free. I'm gonna be meeting with two of my friends that we're doing this walkthrough that just happened to be in DC right now. We have Bike Bike Mo and Lost Heidi. Both have YouTube channels. Kindly subscribe to them. The information will be on the description. So I'm gonna start this journey here by going to the bird museum. I'm a fan of birds, but there's one in particular that I like. It's the biggest representation, the bald eagle, which is a symbol of the United States. So let me show you some of these birds exhibits that they have over here. So guys, we are by the bird museum with Lars Heidi here from Colombia, and we have back, 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 back Mo, Mo Gia in the house. So we're talking about this national symbol, the bald eagle. So you were saying, what was supposed to be the original symbol? It was actually supposed to be the turkey, which they have out over there. Oh, we should go take a you look know, at Benjamin that Franklin wrote it for that to be, you know, the national bird yes. of, to represent the country. Yeah. But, you know, gladly we have the, the bald eagle right now. Right. This is so important because actually it's illegal to shoot a bald eagle in the U.S. too. Yeah. It's, a, it's a felony as well. Right. Mm. I mean, now we're shooting turkeys and eating them for Thanksgiving. Yeah, all day, and all right? As well. Yeah, and we so, pardon them during Thanksgiving too. Right, yeah, and this is like, you know, this, this is such a majestic animal. Yeah. Give, it a, give it a look if you think like, what is more dominant, like an eagle or a turkey? But that animal is so cute. Yeah, There's, what is the symbol of Colombia? I think that they have like flowers. Flowers. Yeah. Orchidia or... Uh, okay. And there is another one, but I don't remember the animal. On your yes, arm and then it goes all right. Down. Yeah, it's just a, such a beautiful bird, guys. Yeah. Such a beautiful bird. Yeah. And these are real ones that are mummified, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a, they're into the endangered species, so there's not that many left, too, yes. as well. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's a, that's one, probably one of the main reasons why it's illegal to, you know, to... To take down to a bald eagle. Right. All right. Yeah. Let's go take a look at the turkeys. All right. So, guys, you have a lot of different birds in here. You know, it's... Man, I have to admit, this is, this is my first time in a long time since I've been to this museum. And I forgot. Look at the turkey, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> if you're watching this, you're that in a one dollar bill. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So yeah, so you have these turkeys here, and uh, yeah, these are pretty big ones too, man. Woo. So every time they do a official pardon at the White House during Thanksgiving, Correct. and the president picks one. Uh, is it two birds or one bird? Uh, no, it's, it's one. It's one. They pick one, one right? Saved. That yes, gets pardoned and one. gets saved. Uh -huh. And one gets eaten. <laughs> and, one, and, gets, and one gets eaten. And it's always a very interesting thing to see. If you haven't seen those, you know, they're pretty fun ceremonies. And then you have much less impressive birds here, very small one, the American tree, sparrow, the goldfinch, the blue cross beak. All right. If you're into birds, you'll be happy here for sure. And it's completely free. <laughs> so what museums can we visit in Bogota in your city? You can go to the Gold Museum. The Gold Museum. Is it free? Um, yeah. Okay. You can go to when they're mating. I don't know, the Casa de la Moneda okay. and the Botero, because he's a famous artist, yes. so he can go there. Okay. Uh, there are plenty, there are plenty actually like also about history, but more indigenous, so yes. you can get to know many. Okay. There is maybe 20 museums in Bogota. In Bogota, oh wow, right on. I've never been to one of them, I should check that out for sure. So we're just venturing out, it's a pretty large museum, and we're heading upstairs now to the Rotunda. Let's go. As soon as you get to the Rotunda, which is the top floor of the museum here, you are welcome with this. You are welcome with this beautiful elephant. Wow. So this is very symbolic for me because I'm from Africa and elephants are actually endangered species, you know. So to have one featured here with some explanation about the danger that they face, this is definitely a really cool sight to see. You get to appreciate really how massive these, you know, these animals are and they live up to 70 years old. I've actually seen an elephant up close, but my first time was actually not in Africa, but in Thailand. That's when I saw the first one. So as you know, the two front teeth, they actually never stop growing throughout the elephant life. They never stop growing. And many times they are killed because people want the ivory, you know, and they traffic it. It's really sad and I hope that most African countries will actually do something in order to prevent this trade from continuing. 
So let's, uh, let's hear from more about his perspective. What do you think about this majestic animal? It's a beautiful animal, you know what I mean? And it, it's actually very uh, docile, you know what I mean? Elephants aren't like attacking uh, any other right. other mammal or creature mm -hmm. too as well. I don't know if you did mention, I mean, the high demand is for the ivory tusk that people do go yes. for. You know, ivory is used in a lot of things, piano keys, yes. um, even Chinese medicine, a lot of different things too as well. Yes. So to, to make, you know, an ivory table or, or whatever it takes, it takes a lot to, to do that. I mean, right. this is an extension of an elephant's body. Right. So not only are they just, you know, removing it and cutting it, it's a defense mechanism. That's right. You know what I mean? So for when it, you know, it comes to uh, defending itself or finding a meat, you know, the, the, long, the longer the tusk, you know what I yes. mean? It's, it's actually, so it's a part of its whole ecosystem as well. Exactly, exactly. It's one of those things that's just, you know what I mean? Yes. It's always, I don't think it's ever going to change though because it's such a high demand. It is a high demand and... Uh, like I was suggesting, I, I hope that things will change and that, uh, you know, People leave these beautiful animals alone there because yeah. I think some of the families are already endangered as we speak right that now. That is true. They do have some yeah. elephant sanctuaries just like set up around the world, but they do have to have, you know what I mean, literally armed guards to yes. make sure that poachers don't go in. Don't go in there. There's a black market that For goes that. into it, you know what I mean, that, that we don't even know about. Right, you know, so, right. You know, the high demand, so. Yeah. Right on. So, guys, they have this really cool map over here that shows you how they're losing habitat more and more. And that is a combination of, you know, okay. construction going on and just illegal hunting going on, all right? The African bush is shrinking and becoming fragmented. This is the biggest threat to Asian uh, elephants. So, so yeah. The top ivory market in the, in the world are China and then the United States, number two, followed by Thailand, Egypt, Germany, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, Sudan, Ethiopia, and Japan on the last one. And you see how they have carved them over here. You know, this is beautiful carving, but when you have to think about what they're actually doing to the animals, you know, to, to produce this, it's, it's quite unfortunate. So I'm looking at this beautiful piece of art, but it makes you it makes you sad to know, you know, like that is a big elephant that probably had to get killed for them to provide this for our viewing pleasure. Living in like England, right? You've never even heard of an elephant, right? You've never even seen like that. And somebody brings this back on a trip or a voyage to say, hey, this is what I have, you know? So well, a lot of people were doing trade and exchange. But if you have the money just to go and get that. No, but it's not about the money like that. We're thinking about a time where people didn't exchange money like that. People were exchanged, uh, it was trade. But yeah. I mean, for me, symbolic is not worth it. Like, right, yeah. Because you just put like, a, I mean, just go through all this effort that the animal is, you know? Of course, those just are your true killed, feelings. Like, yes. But what I'm saying is like maybe hundreds of years ago, if somebody were to come back and show something like this, never seen an item like this before. They might even buy, be able to buy slaves buy, with that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Or I might trade you for, for fur, or I might trade you for sugar, or I might trade you for yeah. flour or something like, you know, yeah. that you may not be used yeah, I get, to. I get your point. So that was yeah. the whole thing. It was, a, it was a trade. It started off as a trade and then it became, today it's a lucrative thing, you yeah. know, to buy an expensive $10,000 piano that yeah. are made from the keys of yeah. a tusk. You, you it's get what crazy, I'm man. It's messed up. So it's just, yeah. I'm not agreeing with it, but, I'm, but I'm, I understand. No, I also get the point. Yeah. 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 Actually, I saw that and I, feel, I was feeling so emotional. I wanted to cry. I was like, oh, don't yeah. cry. Yeah, it's messed up. It's really messed I up. Mean, but you're supposed to feel like that's, yeah. that's what it's aware. That's why they put it in. I mean, that's the purpose of it, to, yeah. to show that, yeah. bring awareness to it. Right. So you're supposed to feel about Guys, we're talking about, you know, the unfortunate trade of Avery, right? Yeah. And uh, we have lost Heidi here, who uh, is not a big fan of these things. It's really sad to see. No, it's and not that I'm not fan. It's that I'm just, I don't share and I just don't get the point where people is, you know, someone oh. going hunting or paying that much money. We're in agreement. We're saying yeah. the same thing. Yeah, totally uh, explaining. But that's the way it is. Why, why yeah. is Trying not to get the other side. Well, hopefully they, they are. I think they're doing it less and less. I mean, some government are fighting it, I think. Uh, that's something that I have to do some research on. I don't know if it's actually increasing or decreasing. Right. You know? It seems like it's increasing. I believe it's increasing. Yes. Yeah. I believe maybe the laws have been made like you know stricter. Yes. But I definitely believe there's that black market of right. doing it. For yeah. example, if you're using a crypto thing, you can you can purchase that without a paper trail. Mm -hmm. You know, from the money coming from it. You know what I mean? So that's just how it is. But like most of the natural resources, even like gold, mm -hmm. when you think of what who's actually going out there searching the gold and working, yes. uh -huh. many times there's like little kids that are working in terrible conditions. Exactly. Right. You see the movie Blood Diamonds. Right. Same thing uh -huh. with diamond pieces. But we all like those things, right? But then you think about it and you're just like, wow. But we're also lucky that we can think of it as something that should not happen. Because right. in some places, 
if you don't work in this field, yes. you have nothing to eat. Exactly. That's unfortunately the reality yes. also. Unfortunate reality. So you have to be in the first world to actually have the luxury to feel bad. Like our friend Heidi here. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to DC. Yeah. Welcome wow. to DC. Yeah. All right. So let's see what's next. Maybe we can check out the Earth, the Ocean Hall. So we are heading to the next exhibit, the Ocean Hall. Share some feedback, guys. If you know more about what's going on with the elephant tusk, the legal trade of elephant, please kindly drop some comments below and let us, let us know your thoughts. Personally, I yeah, don't like it, amazing, yeah. but I understand that in some communities, that's just the way it has to be, unfortunately. So this is the ocean exhibit. Let's see what's going on with the water here. It's very blue. So guys, on this part of the museum, they have a lot of different exhibits that features different animals that live in the water. Like this amazing turtle here, and the shark, and the men of ore. Let's see what Backpack Mo can tell us more about this massive, I mean massive exhibit. Yeah, still looks like it's part of like the jellyfish family itself. Yeah. I think it's a Portuguese man of war, which is or just giant massive jellyfish in a sense. Those tentacles, one of them, you're done. You're paralyzed. That's right. Uh, but these are like at star, uh, depths of the ocean. Like wow. you, once, once you get down to, you know, the, the different tiers of it, you know. And so these animals probably just drive off of just fish and just... I mean, these are single-celled organisms that just kind of just, you know. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't want to catch that uh, in the water for sure right, when right, I'm swimming, right, right, man. Right. Oh, my goodness. No, I don't think so. You would, you would have to be really, really, really far deep down, underneath. really deep, you know what I mean? Yeah. So these are, you know, these survive. They don't need that much to survive. Yes. Um, they have maybe like one meal, maybe a week or something yes. like that. Yes, yes. Uh, these are just... Absolutely. You know, All right. No natural predators are coming after this. After that, yeah, it's a serious thing. And they have a lot of massive different ones here. So you have... This turtle, I don't know exactly the specific name of this particular species, but you can appreciate how large that is. And then, look at this, guys. Now, how massive is that? This one is a model of the largest animal that ever lived, the blue whale. It goes from 69 to 90 feet. It's modeled after the blue whale called Phoenix. So, my understanding is you can see blue whales in Colombia, right? But what yeah, there particular is a time term? in September, more or less, where you can go there and you do whale watching. So that's on the Pacific side. You go to Cali, from Cali to Buenaventura, and there's like three beaches all around, like the Pacific. Yeah. I think it's from August to November, more or less. Oh, nice. They come and they give beer to yeah. baby whales. <laughs> and it's not too expensive, right? I mean, if you come in, could be like, it's not that cheap, but it's not that expensive. So okay. it's affordable. It's affordable, okay, sounds good. You need to take a boat, and you need to yes. go and check, and you know, drive yeah. around, so that you find a way and everything, so. Okay, but sounds it's very, good. very important. It's very nice, yeah. And I know you can also do that in Iceland, right? You, when you went yeah. to Iceland, did you get a chance to see the whales? No, I did it. But you can, you can do it here in the U.S. So you can go to Alaska, you know? Um, yes. It's still part of the U.S. And you can yes. go see it too as well. And some parts of the Pacific coast, on uh, like uh, California, yeah. you can kind of see some of them out there too as well. Okay. Maybe not like the big, larger mass of uh, yes. whales, but you can see other type of like, you know, like dolphins and like, you know, things like that too as well. Okay, right so, on. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, they have a lot of very interesting ones over there. I think the shark one is probably a model as well. But guys, it's... It's blue, it makes you feel like you are underneath, in like in the right. aquarium or something. You know, one of the things that we don't know is, well, we know, we don't know that much about the ocean itself, right? right. We know more about space. Right. Than, than the Earth, than right? Than our Earth Interesting. Itself. But it's because it's very difficult it's, just to get that depth. Right, just to and get to those so depths. Dangerous, so exactly, yeah. right. You don't manage even a kilometer going down. Yeah. I mean, well, you need to have very, very specific... We still don't even have the technology to yeah. even go to the furthest depths of the ocean I agree. itself. Too. I mean, and then plus you can't see what's going on down yes. there too as well. Yeah. We only can send robots and things to go down and snap pictures of That's right. some of these species we don't even like know about. Too exactly. Well, you know? so yeah. It's an evolving process. Yeah. So from this standpoint, you can appreciate how large this thing is. You know, 90 feet. Just think about it. How big they That's can get. Endangered species. And it, it is an endangered species. Yeah. So many endangered species. So here. many endangered species. And the reason why is because a lot of it's because of us pollution. You know, right. pollution. I mean, you can go to so many different countries and you just see trash around yes, the, everywhere. the ocean. Yes, everywhere. Yes. People just throw yes. overfishing. Yes. Uh, like the nets that they have over that, that go inside. Yes. You know? 
yeah. it's, a, it's a problem, you know. Yeah. And we have to be better as humans to, you know, yeah. protect our I, That being said, though, I hope that changing straws really makes a difference. Because that's one thing I don't like about the changes is the, the paper straws. Right. Man, they are horrible, man. Well, so technically straws here are illegal, but who isn't going to enforce it? You know, here in D.C., yes. it's actually illegal to Oh, it is to illegal have to have a straw it, here. But restaurants are still ordering it. Yeah. So, I mean, so you're supposed to have paper straws. Yes. And as you mentioned, they get wet and people like that. It's terrible. But who, who's going to be the straw police that's going to mom and shit? <laughs> okay. So police. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> We're here, right? You know, so. That's right. Is this paper? Or is this plastic? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. so. What's going on with the straws in Colombia? Paper uh, or plastic? We have, no, we have um, actually like a public policy that is developing, and I think in the next five years, we cannot use any like plastic from one single plastic. Yes. So, like straws, plastic bags, or whatever. So, whenever you go to the supermarket, you need to carry with you your own, your own little bag. Okay, all right. Shout out to Puerto Rico because now that they've eliminated like all plastics. All plastics. Well. Yeah. Now, if you want to do it, you have to pay that price. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like here, I think it's, I think now that it starts charging you five cents per bag. Right. You know, but yeah. it's five cents is nothing. So, people yeah, are like, yeah, and I, I don't know. Do you yeah. guys think it makes a difference if you're paying? Five cents or ten yeah, cents. Yeah, so right. just imagine all the plastic bags they give you for free. Yes. So at some point they start charging people who get pissed and they just go with their own bag. Yeah. At some point it's like I think it works. I okay. mean it's not like there's people like I don't give a shit they pay. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. When I need so a bag, like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I need a bag. Yeah. Know, yeah. Like you know. Right. But I get it. You know. Yeah. So we got to do better. So. Makes sense. All right. Let's keep exploring. Yeah. Visiting the fossil hall where you have the bone structures of all these animals here. This is a, obviously an elephant. And you have some plants exhibits here. So this is, a, this is all about skeletons, it seems. I know, right? Yeah, so exactly. And so uh, you're gonna find a lot of dinosaur, like fossils and skeletons as well. Oh, I said elephant uh, behind, but that's actually a dinosaur. Uh, it wow. should be it. So oh, you're gonna find- uh, um, like a elephant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, obviously millions of years ago. And actually one of the most popular like uh, dinosaurs, like the Stegosaurus, a lot of these bones were found here in Washington, D.C. Oh, wow. They excavated it as well. Wow, so amazing. So many uh, uh, Stegosaurus were found in this area. Man. That particular species. So it's a pretty cool thing. Actually, I wanted to be a paleontologist when I was a little Man. kid. I was telling her, they used to ask us, what do you want to be when you grow up as a little kid? And, you know, third or fourth grade, I was like, I want to be the guy who gets the dinosaur bones and wow. all that stuff. Wow, so. an archaeologist. Yeah, you right. should tell people how to come here. Like, where how it's to located. find... Yeah, guys, we are located at the National Mall. And uh, I will show you more about this place, but there are so many museums here. I mean, you will have nothing but options. And they're all free. The National Mall... So Mo came using yes. the Metro Foggy Bottom. Yes, uh -huh. and there's a, like but there's a Smithsonian uh, Metro stop. Smithsonian so Metro. So you can get all closer. specifically from here, from that Smithsonian Metro stop. Yes, and you're right here. So and you are right it, here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so very easy to find. Yeah. And it's so massive, you can spend a day here very easily. So let me show you some other exhibits that they have over here. So a good figurine of the last American dinosaur. We're talking about dinosaurs and, and bones and all these things. Mm -hmm. It kind of brings the question, it's like, okay, did we evolve or is it a big bang thing, right? Yeah, I mean, like it's hard to balance those Some things. people don't believe that they ever existed, you yes, know what I mean? Yes, you know, Especially if you tie religion into it. People exactly. are like, there's no way that, because they were never mentioned in, you know, this biblical text or they were not, but yes. I mean, we have obviously bones and skeletons in here to prove it. They just didn't just put these things together and, and, and why would they, you know yes. what I mean? So, I mean, obviously there was just thousands of years ago before even predated man itself. So, yeah. I mean, and whatever yeah. happened, we really don't know. Um, some people's the earth was different from what it is now. Of course. And it went to different cycles. So yes. uh, whatever wiped them out, or maybe this time happened. You know what I mean? Yes. Over millions of years, things just changed. That's so, right. Uh, it's kind of one of those things. Like, yeah. One of the things I remember is watching, uh, you remember Jurassic Park, the movie? Uh, when it first came out, it seemed so real, and I think it was ahead of its time mm -hmm. when they showcased dinosaurs mm -hmm. in the way. You know, mm -hmm. They were able to bring them back to life. You know? Very interesting. Yeah. Do you believe in dinosaurs or evolution? or What is your theory? Drop comments below and let me know. Good question, yeah. Oh, the and reason I, why they have uh, a long neck is because of what? You get to reach up to trees to like to grab oh, like plants. Oh, okay. Get food as well, so yeah, it reminds it. me of a giraffe. Like a, like a giraffe. Yeah. So some people say maybe the giraffes are kind of like maybe a descendant of that or yes. evolved of that. You know, yes. some of these dinosaurs are um, kind of created, you know, other other animal species that we have on the, uh, the planet today. To yes. Well. Yeah. Um, yeah, you could even say that Triceratops maybe might be in a realm of an elephant that we have That's today, right. the same type of tusk and everything 100%. like that. Yeah. Um, some of these winged animals too as well might have yeah. gone to. 
different uh, species as well. No one really knows the answer. You know what I mean? We all have theories, we all have speculations, but nobody yes. really, nobody knows. Yes. And we just, you know, yeah. enjoy what we have here. That's right. Regardless of what you believe is interesting, do you believe dinosaurs existed? Yeah, I do. You do? Okay. Because we're talking about the challenge between believing this or evolution or the, the Bible explanation of how we came about. So that's what we're talking about. I do believe in Darwin theories, yeah. You, you believe in Darwin theory? Yeah, I think okay. it makes sense. Yeah. If not, like, I will die with that theory anyway. <laughs> yeah, all right. Sounds good. All right, let's continue the exploration. So guys, right behind me is a specimen that was found in Garden Park, Colorado. It's called the Allosaurus fragilis. And it was found by a scientist by the name of Marshall Felch. A bit tough not to believe in the existence of dinosaurs, when you are shown actual bones, right? This is actually like not even made. Because at first when I walked in here, I didn't realize that they were real specimens. I thought when we were talking that these were just like plastic figurines. No, no, But these, these are, are real dinosaur bones. Yeah. And you said Colorado earlier. So people were like, oh, well, how could that be in the US? You got to think about it. The earth millions of years ago used to be one continent itself. Right. Pangea, you know what I mean? Before. Yes. So before like, you know, obviously the, the platelets separated. This was all one, we were all one world, one, one, one planet itself. So yes. to find it in Colorado or to find them in, you know, some places in China or yes. whatever, it's, 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 it was one thing. A hundred percent. I mean, they, they roamed the earth. They had dominance right. over everything. Yeah. So no one to compete with but themselves. Yes. Yeah. This is as close as you will get to a dinosaur. If there's another place you can see specimens like this, let me know. I certainly have never seen this before. Quite impressive. The Acelorus, man. It is a hard name to pronounce. It's Latin. Alisoros yeah, fragilis. Yeah, yeah. yeah, work on that Latin. Uh. <laughs> and guys, contrary to other museums where you just walk in and that's it. You are shown what you are shown. Research actually takes place here still. So right here, you have a fossil lab. So real scientists doing research on different fossils that have been found as we speak. So take a look. This is a live fossil station she sorted to 65 million year old sediment to find tiny fossil bones and teeth and she's using a small paintbrush with water to pick up these particular fossils wow amazing real scientists at work another first one for me i've heard about and seen studies being done on tv but I've actually never seen one lab like this fully at work. So you can appreciate this fossil lab. So guys, right here is a specimen found in 1886, the Stegosaurus. All right, so this was found in Colorado and they had to basically put everything together. It was a real puzzle. And you can notice that these specimens are still attached to the rocks where they were found. It's a very delicate work not to actually break the bone itself as you're excavating it. I have to admit, I didn't know how I felt about dinosaurs before, but now that I've seen this live, I'm one of those people that have to see to believe. And as much as it's not a live dinosaur, you can see it right here that did exist. It's tough balancing religious beliefs and science sometimes. And I'm glad that this at least brings this to perspective for me. This is what's left of a Stegosaurus. All right. So what do you think, man? It's so pretty so far. Pretty good, yeah. I like it. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I've been here several times, but you know, yeah. it's always good to come back and just, you know, relearn stuff to yeah. well, right. educate yourself. He looks like he has been working here for yeah, years. Right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He knows yeah. all the stories. He knows all the stories. He should I need be... one of those volunteer shirts. Yeah, 100%, yeah. So <laughs> man. You should be in the park. Yeah. You know, telling like, people. When we finish, we should tip him like this. <laughs> <laughs> you should get a tip, man. All right. So we're heading now to the African Voices to Ocean Hall. Let's see what this is all about. So this is an exhibit of the South African legend and president by the name of Nelson Mandela. All right, so you have one of his hats over here.
South Africa is the country that I would love to visit. The history there is so powerful and it's just from the time I was a little kid, you know, I heard about Nelson Mandela and the challenge and the struggle that he had and faced back then. And still, Africa, South Africa today has a lot of challenges that I certainly would love to go and experiment myself. So they have a lot of different specimens here and uh, amazing pictures in the background that kind of brings this to perspective for you. All right, so we're talking about horns earlier, and this is a rhinoceros horn and elephant tusk. Wow. So this museum is not just about animals. It's a museum about life. And here, I'm at the African section that features exhibits from several parts of Africa. You have the plate with Nelson Mandela figures that I showed you. You have different pictures, specimens. Of the amazing continent of Africa. All right. So guys, right behind me is a dress from the Brazilian religion that you probably never heard about called Candomblé. I actually have videos that I have released on Candomblé. And if you haven't seen them yet, kindly check out the description. I will put those videos behind. The Candomblé religion is the most interesting and popular religion you never heard about. It is practiced by mostly Afro-Brazilians and it's a descendant of the traditions from Africa mixed with Catholicism. And it's very hard to get access to Candomblé practitioners because they're not interested in really talking much about their religion. If you're not part of that community, it's very difficult for them to even talk to you about it. So I've spent a lot of time and it took me several trips in order for me to actually have access to them. So I strongly suggest if you're interested in the subject to check it out. So when I came over here and I saw this, which is actually called Omolu, is a mask and broom from Salvador Bahia. All right. They do have different events and cultural things that they do in Salvador Bahia, which is the largest African city outside of Africa. I have never participated in any of the ceremonies because every time I've gone there, they were already finished or I left before they started. So this is actually the first time I get to see, you know, up and close and personal, one of the traditional gear, you know? Very interesting, you know, site over here. And I strongly suggest you check it out if you have a chance. Then of course, you have this statue from the Congo in Africa, mother and child, take a look. This beautiful carved wooden sculptures are often sold in Africa for very affordable prices. This particular one is from 1914. All right, and it's made out of wood. Just so uh, you can appreciate the detail. And most of the time, and I believe this was the case as well, these statues are handcrafted. So, so they do talk about and show some of the traditional cuisine here. So Mo, what you got for us? Uh, so it looks like we have, uh, some people call it ugali, some people call it fufu, depending on which part of Africa you are. Yes. It's basically um, a condiment to add to fish, meat, vegetables. You know, you, you kind of uh, add it, uh, you, and you use your hands with it too as well. Right. You know, uh, we've seen this several different times before. Yes. But um, basically, it, it, it's used, you know, to accompaniment to, you know, to these main plates, which you see uh, right here. And it, yes. like I said, it depends which country you are. But I mean, basically, essentially, it's kind of the same, yes. same thing too as well. Basically the same. In Cameroon, we call it fufu. I know in parts of uh, I've been Nigeria in Kenya, is fufu, yeah. it's Ken fufu. Nigeria is fufu, and yes. in Kenya, I believe they call it ugali. Right. But it's basically the same thing. And you eat it with your hands. Right. And um, one thing we want to mention here about the DMV, the DMV is a very diverse area, and I believe the the highest number of Ethiopians outside of Ethiopia are here. Yes, over 50,000. Over 50,000. Yes, so I mean, if you want to get like authentic uh, Ethiopian like food, we have several different Ethiopian restaurants yeah. that are over here too. And you yeah. got to shout out to Ethiopia. I mean, most people, if you didn't know, Ethiopia was like, you know, this, this center yes. of the world too. One of the first, like, it's the, I think the first manned skeleton was found in Ethiopia yeah. too as well. So it has a lot of history and it's actually one of the only countries in Africa that was never colonized yes. as well. Oh, wow, interesting. You know I mean, very, yeah. very nice. So they, they have a lot of traditions, a lot of things are still kept there too as well. Yeah, yeah. Right now. And they have several restaurants in DC and Virginia if you're into Ethiopian food. If you come to the DMV and that's the kind of stuff you like, 
definitely check it out. All right. Oh, yeah, right here. 50,000 Ethiopians live in Washington, D.C. area. All right. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Sounds good. Excuse me, I have to fight with the sound from the TV behind. One of the popular things in Cameroon is cola, and I'm sure throughout Africa as well. So this is actually what it looks like, and it's dry. Anything wrong with you? You have headaches? They will tell you, get a cola. You have a stomachache? Get a cola. But it's actually a aphrodisiac as well. And they even use this as a dowry, you know. When you get married, you have to exchange gifts with the bride's family. This is one of the things they will give away. I like this exhibit because I literally feel like I'm in an African market with this TV going on right now. And you can see a traditional African market. All right? And then you have the cola station right there. Man, this is definitely a piece of Africa here in the museum. And you also feature some of the clothing and tapestry. And look at these guys. These are scrap materials that they use to make toys in Africa. As you know, with poverty in many parts of the continent, kids, especially in villages, don't have the luxury to have toys. It's not a guarantee you will ever have a gift from your father or mother during Christmas season if you ever celebrate that, little less on your birthday. So kids over there get very smart and they create anything out of nothing. As you see featured here, this is a bike. Who knows where these wheels are from? And they get the wood together, you know, places of hoses, and they can make a little bicycle. And they get to bike around the village. And it brings them a tremendous amount of joy, guys. Because when you have nothing, you appreciate the little things. So here on this exhibit, you can basically see some of the scraps that they've used to make these toys. You know, you have pieces of motorcycles, you know, different spray products, pieces of metal, candy wrappers, cans, anything. And I remember when I was a little kid, I've never played with them as much because I was one of the lucky few that had toys. But I remember going to the village when I was younger and kids were playing with these cars. You know, these are different plants that they've cut and trees and built. Even you can recognize a piece of your flip-flops right there. And that's what this one was made with. So this is a taxi and a dump truck. All right. And this is another, an, ex an example of another one that they used in order to make these toys. And actually you hold that stick, push this around, and then you will see this person actually doing little movements man africa represented so much more to show you guys but i can say if you find yourself in dc make sure you check it out what do you think of this exhibit and the museum in general as we step I really it like out it. i think it's very worth it yeah really really it's i mean you should spend like a whole day here yes just to come and take your time don't come in a rush because There's you're a gonna to miss say. a lot too yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but it's really worth it yes i really like it all right and I know Mo, he's a basically a guy today. We are lucky to have him. He's basically, the, you know, an employee of this museum. He knows just about everything here. He's been in here a few times. You said that's your favorite museum, right? Uh, yeah, it's one of my favorites too. You know, yeah. and these are always, some people don't like coming to museums and stuff like that, but you should always strive to learn and educate, you know, myself. I agree. I mean, all the information is here for you. You know, you don't need to necessarily like someone like me or, uh, you know, or a tour guide to sell you. Just go and read it. If you can yes. read it, you can find out the information there. Or there's always things that I learn too. And you know, and I, I miss some things and some things I, I, I learn, you know, each right. time I come here. So Sounds and good. The museum, the museum is famous. You you say because of the movie I, I keep yeah, on forgetting. Yeah, I think the Museum was, was filmed here too as well. Yes. So yeah, so we saw that like the elephant come to life or right. the, you know, the dinosaurs come to life. You see like the bones and stuff like that too yes. as well. So, you know, DC is a hot spot, you know. It's a hot spot, man. Well, don't forget Check about Check out Mo's too. channel. What's Definitely. your channel? Backpack Mo. You guys can find Backpack me there. Mo? Yes, exactly. And Backpack then we have Lost, Lost ID, ID on YouTube. I honor my name. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thanks for tuning in. This is it for this museum, guys. This is just to show you again some of the things that you can see when you come to the nation's capital. It was a great time out here. I enjoyed it. Too much to show, but these are just some of my favorite exhibits here at the museum. So kindly hit that like button, share the video, and visit Washington DC. Cheers. 
So guys, here is the replica. And right here is the real chain that belonged to Nipsey Hussle. He wore them from 2004 until 2018. Rest in peace, Nipsey Hussle. A true legend.